Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to episode five. Now, today we're going to be talking about something called functions. So what we're going to do is going to add a brand new script. We're going to name it functions, and then we're going to go straight in, and we're going to create our first function. I've done a terrible job of trying to spell out functions there for the name, but there we go, we've named it. Now, a function, to start out creating one, we literally just type the word function. And then we have to give it a name because functions are almost a little bit like variables in this way. So we can give it a name. Uh, I'll just call it my function. And then what we need to do is we need to have an opening and closed bracket. Okay. So opening bracket and the closed bracket is automatically being created for us by Roblox. Uh, and as we do so, we notice that um, the my function text has been highlighted blue as well. So it's been recognized as the function name. Uh, and then all you need to do is press enter new line and we see it creates a code block like we've already seen for the while loops and the if statements. Uh, and all we're gonna do in this function, uh, we'll print out a message to start off with. So we'll print out um, text, we'll say, this is my function, exclamation mark. Why not, bit of enthusiasm. And what's interesting about functions is unlike a loop or an if statement, they don't actually run straight away. So if I run the code right now, we will see down in the output, it's gonna be completely empty. So why didn't that message run? Well, it's because we've kind of compartmentalized it away like a variable, we've tucked it away, we've saved it, but we haven't actually told it the code to run. So if we want the code to run, we need to type its name, so my function, and you'll notice it's being auto-suggested here, so I could press enter and it'll auto-complete for me. And as it do so, it also get the two opening and closed brackets on the end. That's really important, because if I didn't have those brackets, well, it's gonna think that it's a variable name. So a function, opening and closed brackets. So this is telling it to run this block of code. So it's going to go straight to line five. Yes, I know this function. Go back up to line one and run the code that's contained within it. So if we now run the game, we'll see down in output, this is my function, exclamation mark. So well, let's see, uh, why would you want to use this? Well, they can be really useful because you can actually send information to it in between these brackets. So instead of just having it print out, this is my function every time, instead, let's have it print out a custom message. Um, so right in between these brackets, we're gonna give it a variable name now. So we're gonna expect a variable. The variable is gonna be my message. And then we're gonna print out the value of the my message variable. Now, you might be saying, well, the my message variable we haven't given it any value well yeah normally we'd give a a variable like this wouldn't we we say the name and then we would give its value well we can actually do this all within inside the function now so when we call my function we're going to expect the value of that variable so we can type in the message hello there remember it's a text so we need those um, quotation marks for it and if we wanted we could run this function yet again so new line and we could say my function and this time uh, we could just put a bunch of numbers we could put one two three four five six and so on and then if we wanted another message we could call the function again and we could say this is the final countdown da -da -da -da. and now if we run that, we will see all our messages have been printed in the output. And we're not just limited to sending uh, one variable or one piece of data, we could actually send multiple. So let's, uh, let's rename our function and we can call the function now add. And we're gonna add two numbers, A and B, okay? So expecting two variables. And inside the function, we're gonna print out uh, 
adding, I'm going to say a comma a string plus symbol comma and b. So we're just going to print out the calculation that we want to do. And oh, it looks like I missed out a comma there. So I'll add another one in. So value, comma, value, comma. And then the next line, we're going to print out what is the result of those two. So I can say A plus B. And we'll add them both together. And now, obviously, my function, you notice, doesn't exist anymore because I renamed it to add. So I can remove these. And now I could type add uh, 10. And the next value would be uh, 22, say. I could add... 15 and 197 and if I ran both of those in the output we would see adding 10 plus 22 is 32 and adding 15 plus 197 is 212 so there we go you can see I've reusing code now so it's uh, a lot quicker to do and you can just glance at that and you can see I'm adding them together so that probably brings us about to the end for this video. Uh, but one thing I thought you might have noticed is that when we're using the print uh, command or whatever you'd like to call it, you might have noticed that that also has these opening and closing brackets. And that's because the print statement is actually a function itself. Uh, the print function is a function that's created by Roblox and this adding function well, that's a function that we've created ourselves. So in the next video, what we're going to look at is a few more functions that are created by Roblox that are available for us to use, a bit like the print one. So until next time, see you later.